Rub up your engines! Check it out, a brand new Toyota Avalon for $28,800. What a deal, where can you get one? Well, first you need a time machine because this is 2007, that's what it cost back in the day. And yet this old luxury car can still get 31 miles a gallon on the highway. A Toyota Avalon, of course, is Toyota's top end car. It had been for quite some time. Now they're stopping them. They're not making them in 2023. They're replacing them with the Toyota Crown. I took a look at the pictures. Kind of looks like a squashed down Camry. All of them are gonna be hybrids, four cylinder turbocharged engines. Don't have the smooth power that something like this does with a six cylinder engine. They're all going for the same kind of rating for gas mileage. They still got good gas mileage. I don't know why they bother worrying about it, but you know, that's politicians and corporations. Bought this car brand new for that price. He's got two 217,000 miles on it and listen to it it's still quiet as can be they knew how to make these engines that's for sure now this is an 07 so it's got timing chain on it you don't have to worry about a rubber timing belt my wife's 2002 lexus or that 2005 lexus it also has a timing belt this has a timing chain still original 217,000 miles does it burn oil no now he did have to replace the alternator there's the new one but that was just a short time ago it went all those years that finally went out and he had to put one on that shows you how well made these are this still has of course the original engine the original transmission these things were Toyota's top car at the time. As you can see when we go in here, now this one was made in Kentucky, but they did a good job. We had a Toyota Camry station wagon that was made in Kentucky. Both of my sons learned how to drive on it. They took the stupid thing over 100 miles an hour. They ran into things and it just kept rolling down the road. Realize the engines and transmissions and everything come from Japan. They just put them together and conduct an assembly point is what it is. Now this particular one, is a luxury car of a different color because you can see he put these covers over the seats it's got regular seats instead of leather seats now if you want things that look good forever fabric is better it won't crack like leather it's gonna hold up better he just put these on because he likes to see he doesn't want to wear them out but look at the shape they're in i mean they're still smooth comfy as can be and there's a lot of room in the back being a luxury car of course you got heat and an air conditioning coming out here the trunk is just like the lexus they look exactly the same cabinet's trunk and the seats pop down if you want get more space and of course they have this crazy little hole i guess you can grab your drinks or whatever's in the trunk you can hear how solid they are these are solid made cars and really everything in here is about the same it's basically the Lexus of Toyotas. Same company. Yeah. And so it's old. It has a lot of mileage, but sure sounds good. We'll see what the computer says. The diagnostics, Toyota. But it's new enough, it reads it. And while we're waiting, we can see he modernized it. Put a nice little Pioneer Android here. I like it because it doesn't have a smart key. Less technology, the better. We'll start her up. Do a little diagnosis. Auto scan. Here we go. Now the important things are good. It does have fault with the tire pressure monitors because I'm sure the batteries have gone bad on them. Hey, the leather steering wheel still in pretty good shape. No faults except for tire pressure monitor. Let's see what that says. Probably say the sensors are bad or something. Dead or not, received from two, three, four, so three of them aren't even working. The owner agrees with me. He's got a tire pressure gauge. You'd have to buy all the sensors, have them reprogrammed, spend a bunch of money when a pressure gauge costs 10 bucks. So that we don't even care about. So now we're starting her up, look a little bit at live data. Don't see anything odd yet. The Cadillac converters are working, they should. The front ones are hotter, 242, 242, than the back one's 126, that's how they're supposed to go. You can see it never, never had any codes. This includes historical codes and there aren't any. So let's take this old girl for a spin. He didn't hook up a backup camera. Use the mirror for that. First thing you notice is it's old, but it's still exceptionally quiet. Except for me talking. And you have the smooth V6 acceleration. It doesn't need a turbo. It doesn't need GDI fuel injection. It's just smooth power in Toyota's luxury car of the day. And interestingly enough, you can see it handles quite well, but it's still got the original struts on it. 217,000 miles. It's still got the original struts. Now my wife's Lexus does too, but it's only got 90,000 miles on it. So if somebody tells you you need struts on your Lexus or Toyota, get a second opinion that's my advice it's a nice quiet luxury car everything on it still works you can barely feel it shift those transmissions 
you can take all those eight and ten speed ones they're nowhere near as smooth as these old ones are we'll get to our little drag strip we'll come to a stop since there's no one behind us and here we go oh man this thing has power holy cow and smooth power you step on the gas is there jerkiness no just smooth power going down the road okay right here does somebody have a turbo version of any of the new toyotas with a four-cylinder turbo be it a toyota or a lexus please bring them to me and i will compare them because i can tell you right now there's no way it's going to be smooth like that and there's no way that one of those is going to have 217,000 miles and still be running this good not burning any oil not making odd noises going so smoothly We're riding on a magic carpet right on this thing even with the original four struts and 217,000 miles and of course consider this one was made in kentucky it wasn't even made in japan and i find it rather funny that this was toyota's luxury car he paid twenty-eight thousand dollars for it when he bought it new today the average price of a new car is like forty-nine thousand for an average car not a luxury car like this do i hear bearing noises no i don't hear anything all that mileage everything's still working fine come to a start it's almost like you're an electric car it makes hardly any noise at all and there may be toyota's luxury biggest car they made but it still handles fine in the twisties big car but it's fun to drive okay so they're replacing the avalon with this thing a toyota crown which looks kind of like a squash down camry to me and of course the replacement toyota crown for the avalon they're hybrids and they have four-cylinder turbocharged engines there's no way they're going to be as smooth as this and they certainly won't last as long either now they had a long run with the avalon at least they didn't replace them with an suv like everyone else or ford calling the mustang mach e a mustang when it is an electric suv and has nothing to do with mustang because these are pretty well-made cars they can last a really long time it's just basically Toyota's version, Lexus and that Lexus. Smooth power, they can run forever. They were great cars. Now, I never owned one. We did have a Toyota Cressida, which was the precursor to this, and it was a great car too. In our case though, the leather seats just rotted away. If you remember the ant stories, the ants built a nest under the leather seats. We had cheap covers and we took them off. There's a colony of ants in there and the paint was all fading away and the engine did blow a head gasket because the Cressidas were an inline six and these v6s are actually much smoother better engines than those inline sixes were so as far as i'm concerned this is like the epitome of what toyota made for smoothness and luxury you can find one of these still rolling down the road hey pick it up they can run an awful long time and hey, getting 30 miles a gallon in a car like this hey it's pretty good for something this smooth that can last as long as these things last i had a customer with one had a million miles and it still was running pretty much the same as this one's running but alas they're not going to make them anymore so get the old ones while you can because as far as i'm concerned they don't make them like they used to people and cars and here's some bonus questions and answers lily says i got a honda crv 2010 with po 420 code for the catalytic converter Midas wants to sell me a catalytic converter what should i do that's a very common code po 420 it means that your catalytic converter is working inefficiently it can be a bad catalytic converter it could be bad oxygen sensors giving bad data saying the converter's bad when it isn't or it can be a problem in your fuel system or engine where it's running too rich running too lean misfiring which will put on burn gas in the cat and then the cat won't work right so you say the car works perfectly fine get the same gas mileage if you live in an area where they don't do yearly emissions testing you can just keep driving it i had people tennessee drive on 10 years that way and they still work perfectly fine because they don't do emissions testing here if you may live in an emissions testing area what you want to do get some catalytic converter cleaner Put in a gas tank, put a tank of Shell V, their high test gas, and drive it for 200 miles. You might find the light will go off. It can clean it up so that it works good. Great. Now, let's say that doesn't work. The problem is that system is a very complex feedback system, like I started to explain here. You got oxygen sensors, the engine, how it's making an air fuel ratio, the catalytic converter that's supposed to burn on burn hydrocarbons. If your cat is really going bad, it's a Honda. They generally last forever. Something is wrong in the system making it go bad, like your engine's burning oil, running rich or lean. So, if you just replace the catalytic converter like Midas wants to sell you and make money, you might find next year you'll get the same code pop right back up because the 
problem in the engine system, we'll just make the new catalytic converter go bad too. So, it's never as simple as just replacing the catalytic converter, unless it's a broken catalytic converter that rattles, because the pieces inside can break out, and then you hit it with a hammer, you'll hear rattle, rattle, and then you got to replace it because it's physically broken. But if it's not physically broken, it runs fine. It's generally that it's somewhat dirty inside, you might try cleaning it first, and then hope that works, because just replace it, it won't fix it in the long run. Something's making it go out. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.